Today, I'm excited to dive into one of the most game-changing announcements from AWS recently, AWS App Studio. Whether you're an IT project manager, a data engineer, or an enterprise architect, this new service is about to make your life a whole lot easier. Imagine being able to create fully managed enterprise-grade applications in just a few minutes, all by simply describing what you need in plain English. No coding, no hassle, just pure productivity. Sounds incredible, right? We'll stick around because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how AWS App Studio is making this possible and why it might just be the tool that you didn't know you needed. Hi, if you're new around here, my name is Ryan. I'm an AWS certified solutions architect and developer, and my goal is to teach you modern serverless system design using AWS. Let's jump in. So what is AWS App Studio? Well, basically it is a new feature from AWS that allows you to use a large language model to build an entire application in minutes without coding. You basically describe to the AI using natural language what you're trying to build, and then the AI will actually build an entire application front end and back end fully functioning with AWS services. App Studio is great for people who want to generate initial drafts of applications, but might not necessarily know how to code or manage the underlying AWS infrastructure required to build them. Some of the use cases that it suggests here in the documentation are claims processing, inventory management, project approval, audits, or metrics and reporting. So we're going to jump here into the console and we're going to set up App Studio and I'm going to show you how to use it. All right, so let's jump over here into the console and first thing we'll do is we'll talk about some of the prerequisites that you need to set up in order to be able to use App Studio. The first thing you're going to need is admin privileges to be able to manage AWS IAM Identity Center. So this means whatever user you're logged in as just needs to have those admin privileges. Second, you will need to be able to to create and deploy roles and policies. If you don't have both of these things, the setup will fail when you try. So I just jumped over here into I am so that we can take a look at the user that I'm signed in as. But as long as you have administrator access on that user, you should be able to do everything required to set up App Studio correctly. So let's jump over here into App Studio. The first thing that you're going to notice is that it's only available in US West 2. This is because App Studio is currently only in preview mode. And a lot of times when AWS releases a new service, they will only release it into a single region so that people can test it out. So we'll click on that and we'll switch our region over to US West 2. So we're going to click on get started here. And then it's going to tell us that we first need to enable Identity Center. So we can go over here to Identity Center. And then we should still be in US West 2. We just hit enable. All right, so now that we've enabled Identity Center, let's go ahead and jump over here into groups. We're going to create group and we're just going to call this admin. Just call it admin app studio group. And we'll create the group. Next, we'll jump over here into users and we'll create a user. All right, so we just create a username. We have to have an email address and then a first and last name. We'll hit next. Then I'll add myself to the admin group, make sure everything looks okay here. And then we just click add user. I selected it to generate me a one-time password. So we'll just copy that and then we'll close. All right, so that should be all the prerequisites that we need to set up in order to make App Studio work. So let's jump back over here into App Studio. We'll click on get started. We'll select our admin group. We will agree to all these acknowledgements down here saying that App Studio is going to create a bunch of things on our behalf and we click setup. The reason why you have to do all of this setup is because App Studio actually has its own user and group management system that runs on top of IAM Identity Center that exists independently of your normal IAM permissions for your AWS account. Users will actually have a separate login that they can use to log in and view the App Studio dashboard. And it allows you to separate permissions between admins and builders inside of App Studio. And as soon as this finishes up, we'll see a little bit more about how that works. All right, so it looks like our instance was successfully created. Let's jump over here and take a look. We can see here that the instance is active and it actually has its own URL. So we can jump here into App Studio and we can click sign in. And now we're just gonna sign in as that user that we created earlier. And we'll enter that randomly generated password. And I actually have multi-factor authentication set up here. So I'm gonna set that up for this user real quick and then I'll be right back. So we set up our two-factor authentication. This will also ask you to set a new password. All right, so we did that and it takes us to the admin hub here because we were part of the admin group. There's too much to go into here in one video, so I'm just gonna walk you through the process for creating your first application. First, we're gonna to navigate to the Builder Hub and we'll click on Create App. All right, so just define your app name and then generate your app with AI, hit Next. If you have existing data sources, you can select these here, but since this is our first time, we'll just skip this for now. All right, and this will take a few minutes to set up our application so we can start describing what we wanna build. All right, so this brings you to the prompt page where we can describe what we wanna build. I'm actually gonna use one of these sample prompts here for the IT inventory management and then just click Customize. This will just copy paste it down here and we can read through kind of what this wants to build. So this is is basically just allowing us to have a data store that allows us to keep track of like mice, keyboard, monitors, things like that. 
So let's send this and move on to the next step. And now the LLM will take a couple minutes here and then it will generate us some requirements. So the first thing to notice on here is the requirements that the app generates. They are actually laid out in such a way to where a non-technical person can get a pretty good understanding of the user stories behind the application and what's being built. And then if we actually jump down into the app overview, it actually goes into a little bit of technical detail so it can help developers understand what the application is supposed to do and how it's supposed to achieve the specified business goal that's laid out in the requirements. I think that App Studio is phenomenal for generating and initial set of requirements for an idea or a proof of concept. It's also decent at generating a rough draft of data models and different relationships between the different components. However, you definitely want to make sure that you read through these requirements and ensure that this is as accurate of a description of what you're trying to build as possible. Once you leave this page, you will no longer be able to use the LLM to help you tweak the application. All right, so now we'll just go down here and we'll click generate app and we'll see what it creates for us. So there's a quick tutorial here that you can watch that'll walk you through the basics of using the editor, but we'll just click here into edit app. So now that it's actually generated the application, you can see that it's kind of a no code, low code editor here. Now the coolest part about this is, is that it's actually fully functional. So if we actually hit preview up here, it'll actually generate us an entire web application that we can then interact with and ensure that it works in the way that we want it to. All right, so it created the application. It's almost the same view, only this is in preview mode, so it's behaving just like a web application would. So we can see here that we can fill out the form for a new request. I'd actually pre-populate some of these dropdowns with a few different values and we can hit submit. We can actually see here too that it has its own console so you can actually see uh, the different actions that are being taken you know every time you interact with the application so this is actually kind of cool as well if we jump here into review requests we can see that it was actually populated with some dummy data and it's even got the request that i just put in if we click on add new assets we can see that it's got some dummy data in here as well so if we jump back here into the editor, in addition to the different pages, you can see the automation flows here that we have, like creating a hardware asset. We can see our different data stores here too. So this is basically the databases where the different requests and the hardware assets are being stored. And again, all of this was generated just by prompting an LLM. So from that standpoint, it is pretty cool, everything that can be created. However, one of the downsides is that all the changes to the application have to be done by hand through this editor. And this editor is a little overwhelming when you first look at it and even knowing where to start can be difficult. I would say that this is definitely useful for non-technical people who want to at least generate a prototype of an application that they're looking to build before then handing it off to their developers to then run with it. Sometimes it can be difficult for them to communicate to the developers what they're looking to build. I found that this actually kind of bridges that gap though and builds something that is functioning up to a point to where the developer can have a better idea of what needs to be created. But as far as editing the actual application that gets created by App Studio, I feel like it would probably be just too difficult and not really worth the effort. Would I call the application that gets created enterprise grade? I think probably not. I think App Studio has a little bit of ways to go, but it's definitely a great place to start. So that about wraps up the video for today. Have you used App Studio? I'm curious to hear what your experience is with it. Have you built something? Was it successful? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Let me know down in the comments. Please don't forget to like the video if you found value in this, and then please let me know down in the comments if there's any other videos that you want to see me make on this channel. Thank you for watching.